Hi, I'm Randy Post. I've been a professional road racer my entire life. Also a journalist with Motor Trend Magazine and the Haggerty YouTube channel. And I'm here today at Atlanta Motorsport Park to be introduced to a new electric vehicle that's part of the coming wave of performance. I've never seen this car before, and it was created by two mad scientists, Brian Bourne and Joel Fillets. And guys, what do we have here? This is the Scalar SCR1 race car. It's an all electric touring race car that you can take and race in the NASA Super Touring Series this year. So Randy, being an awesome driver he is, and a big EV fan, we're gonna use him for setting up the shocks, the sway bars, the tires, everything with this car to get us some really good feedback. So that you, when you buy the car or drive it, it's pretty much down to personal preference if you wanna make some little changes with it. So I'm gonna sit here with Randy and we're gonna walk through the car and show him the highlights. It's great to see this thing in person. So up front, you'll notice a big difference. There's no engine up here now. This is where the old Subaru Boxer engine used to be, but now there's just a box. So the, <laughs> the battery starts up here at the front and it's a T-shaped battery. So it runs down the transmission tunnel and ends in the back seats. So it is now also a structural member to the car because we had to cut the transmission tunnel out. We cut a bit of the firewall out. So now it is reinforcing the entire car with a quarter inch skid plate that runs from the front all the way to the back. So not only is it structural, now you have a perfectly flat bottom race car for aerodynamics. This is an ideal setup. I mean, for one, the uh, Lexus LFA is a front engine rear transaxle. The Corvette always was yeah. until the C8 and uh, Porsche 944, 928. I remember the old Pano's prototypes <laughs> and they work. Yeah, yeah, it gives, it can make a chassis more predictable. So this is a uh, unique creation, it's bespoke. Every part of this powertrain is unique to this, this application. You did not borrow any parts from a Tesla. No. Not a single <laughs> part. This is all scalar. This is all scalar and hypercraft. And designed for racing. Yes. yes. That's cool. It, yeah, well, That's cooling cool. is why we had to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. That's yeah. what I've found, yeah. Yeah, like right now, the radiator is cooling just the inverter. Um, so the battery, we don't have any cooling in it right now because we have a very, uh, the cells inside this battery will handle a lot of thermal load very well. So we're monitoring them closely to see how this battery handles with no cooling in it at all. And so far it's handled actually quite well. Wow. Not to say in the future, we'll probably run a cooling loop for the battery and a cooling loop for the inverter and a cooling loop for the motor. Cause all three devices require very different thermal property to them. Some like to live at uh, like 80 C, some like to live at 60 C, like Celsius that is. So we want to isolate them from each other. We're in a gas car, you know, it just so happens that the engine, the transmission, you, the occupant, like to live all at the same temperature, right? So the one cooling system can cool pretty much everything. So in an EV car, there's different, different temperatures of things like to live at. So we're kind of experimenting with that too, because we're using all the spoke parts for this car that we want to create data of all that for all conditions and then build accordingly. So if we walk down the side here, I'll show you some other safety features that we've implemented in this car. You'll notice the light here on the side. So this is down to the rule books that FIA have, have mandated. This light behavior is green if the car is safe to touch. If the light is red, there's an issue with the high voltage system. Basically take caution when you, when you approach the vehicle, there's a fault with the high voltage system. We have the e-stop the e button in there, which once you press that button, that will open the contactors and basically isolate the high voltage system from the rest of the car so that it's safe for you to handle it and touch the car. As you can see, the transmission tunnel is the battery. Up here in the middle, there's our main service disconnect. So this is also like a big circuit breaker for the car. Everything you see here, as far as the status light, the e-stop is also on the side of the car. Also, you'll see, so the battery pack, which you can see runs through the tunnel up here in the back seat is where it stops. So that's where the bulk of the battery is kind of in the back. That's how we achieve that 55, 45 weight balance. We've moved most of the cells in the pack to the back to give us a bit more in the weight. So in the back here, Brian will show you all the fun bits. So it's a rear wheel drive car. The motor is right there, bolted straight down to the subframe, drives the rear wheels through a gear reduction box that picks up the torsion limited slip, drives the axles just as it would in a GR86. Uh, and the big, big box there is the inverter. That's what takes the DC power, converts it to the AC power we need to run the motor. And that thing that looks like a dry sump tank is a dry sump tank. And that provides the cooling and lubrication for the motor. And what power are you running? So that motor is capable of 500 horsepower. Right now, we're just finding the right balance of power delivery and runtime. The, the motor is actually quite small. 
right? Yeah, yeah it weighs much. about 80 pounds. So in the, 80 pounds? 80 pounds. Wow. Yeah, so it's, you can pick it up. It's heavy, but you can pick it up. Yeah, that's not, that's not much. And it sits just kind of on top of the subframe. So one of the big things we wanted to achieve with this car, because of the car handles so well, and it's known for being a great road car, we didn't want to mess with any geometry, any suspension, anything like that. So everything sits on top of the subframe and drops down with the gearbox into the subframe so the factory GRE6 axles go in. As a race car driver, it's handy to, if you break something, to be able to replace it and service it rather quickly. Yeah, you so bet. So you can just now go to any other GRE6 BRZ and replace it with other control arms, axles, hubs, wheel bearings. Oh. It's all still GR86 BRZ parts. You know what, that is a great feature for a race car. Because things are going to get dinged, you're going to bend the controller, control arm. and you don't have to go to Scaler and try to get one out of your local AutoZone. Yeah. Toyota or AutoZone, yeah. 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 Exactly. Oh, and I like that, that's smart. Well, Randy, I'm really excited to get your feedback once you get to drive this. Well, I know suspension and I know race car handling, and this thing looks like a race car. I can't wait to get it on track and just go.